Hello everyone, I am Sanya. I am the treasurer of the placement cell of Lady Sriram College and I extend a very, very warm good afternoon to all of you. I am very excited to see this huge participation of more than 100 people. I wholeheartedly welcome you all to the day one of our five day campus to corporate series of skill building sessions. And today's session is on the topic of demystifying the field of actuarial science. Today, we'll talk in depth about this course and how to start a career in it. Our speaker for today is uh, Mr. Praveen Patwari. He is the founder of Actuators and has cleared 10 out of the total 13 papers of actuarial science. He is a graduate from St. Xavier's College of Kolkata and is also a chartered accountant and a FRM level two candidate as well. I'm sure that his industry expertise in uh, near about 10 years of teaching experience will help us learn a lot today. So without any further ado, I hand over to you, sir. Looking forward to this great session. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. Like, first of all, I would like to thank the placement cell of Lady Sri Ram College uh, for uh, organizing such great webinars so that the students are enlightened in the right direction. Okay. So to start with, I am Praveen Patwari and I started my college journey in 2014 and uh, I started off with CA first because during my, uh, like when I was uh, starting my college days, like there was not enough guidance regarding what career aspects are there. Like for example, nowadays you all have lots of resources in YouTube and everything, but at that point of time, we didn't have any. So CA was something which was, I, I was seeing people, they were doing the course and I started off with CA. Then eventually I got interested in this course of actuarial science and till now I have cleared 12 actuarial examinations because I am in the old curriculums out of 15, I have cleared 12 and I am like planning to clear the rest three in this attempt of uh, March and April. Okay. So to start with, like, I will request you all to switch on your cameras so that we can have a interactive session because I can just see the names of uh, all the participants. So uh, it's just a request. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, just give me a moment. Is the screen visible, Sanya? Is, is, is it visible properly? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So let me start by taking a few examples, like where do we work and what is uh, primarily actuarial science? Okay. So let's take the example of uh, the ad of Policy Bazaar. I will just request all of you to please uh, switch off your mic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let us take the example of PolicyBazaar.com. Now, what is PolicyBazaar.com? It is a online platform where we can buy insurance policies. Okay. Now, have you seen the ad of PolicyBazaar.com? What do they say? They say that please buy term assurance. Uh, where you can get a claim of 1 crore rupees whenever you die. And in order to get that claim of 1 crore rupees whenever you are dying, you need to pay insurance premiums of 10,000 rupees per annum. Okay, now let me explain you what is a term assurance. Now, a term assurance is uh, whenever you are dying, like let's say suppose you are dying in the next 50 years, then the insurance company is going to pay you a lump sum. That is known as the claim. Now that... Uh, Claim can be of any amount, like it can start from 10 lakh, 20 lakh, 15 lakhs, uh, 1 crore, 5 crores, it can be anything. Now, why that term assurance? Because if you die in a particular term, then the insurance company is going to pay you the amount, the sum assured amount. And in order to get that sum assured amount, like whenever you die, there is no other person to earn, right? So basically your dependents will use that money uh, to like uh, to live to live after after you're not there. Okay, so basically we all have a term assurance and for a sum assured of let's say suppose one crore rupees, the insurance company charges a nominal of 10,000 rupees roughly per annum. Now, uh, if I die in the next 50 years, then the insurance company is going to give me the claim. Okay, so let's say suppose I die in the 41st year. Now I'm 25 years old. If I die till 75, then the insurance company is going to give me the claim. Now, if I die in the 41st year, then what will happen? I have paid the insurance company claim. I, I have paid the insurance company premiums for the next 40 years. So let's say, suppose the premium amount is 10,000 and I've paid the premiums for 40 years. Then what is the total uh, premium amount that I have given to the insurance company in the 40 year span? Can I have some answers in the chat box? If the 
per year premium cost is 10,000 and I'm paying premiums for 40 years and then I am dying in the 41st year. So what is the uh, total premium that I have paid to the insurance company? Can anyone say? What is the total premium? It is 4 lakh rupees. It is 4 lakh rupees. And how does that 4 lakh come? It is 10,000 into 40. Okay. And if I die in between 40 and 41, okay, then the insurance company is going to give me a claim of, let's say, suppose 1 crore rupees. I have given to the insurance company 4 lakh rupees and the insurance company is going to give me 1 crore rupees in return. So how is this possible? How is this possible? Because I am not the only one who is going to take an insurance policy. There are crores of people, those who are doing insurance every day. Okay. There are crores of people to take insurance policy. And that is how the pooling of risk is done. That is how the pooling of risk is done because the insurance company is not only collecting 10,000 rupees premium from a single person. It is collecting that premium from all the persons in India and wherever uh, they are like having their market. Okay. Let us take the example of Paytm. Now, Paytm does flight insurance. Now, what does it say? It says, sir, please pay us 500 rupees extra. And in case if you are canceling your flight ticket last moment also, then also we are going to give you full reimbursement of your flight ticket. Let's say, suppose the flight ticket is 6,000 rupees. Okay. And Paytm is charging 500 rupees from every person on boarding the flight. So the Paytm, let's say, suppose uh, there are 50 persons, those who have uh, taken the insurance. So 50 into 500 comes to 25,000. And if Paytm needs to pay, uh, for example, claim to three persons and the total cost of claims comes around 15,000 or 18,000, then also Paytm is making some good profits. Okay. This is the concept of pooling of risk. Okay. <laughs> Now let's take the example of movie ticket insurance that Paytm has launched. Now, whenever you're booking a movie ticket from Paytm, what does it say? Sir, pay us 50 rupees extra. And in case if you're not like uh, willing to watch the movie last moment, or for example, you were uh, about to go movie, about to go to the movie with your best friend. And there is a fight between you two. So then, 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 the, then the movie ticket cost will be wasted, right? So in that moment, Paytm will help you. And it hardly costs hundred rupees to take that insurance and if you buy that insurance, then Paytm is going to fully refund you the movie ticket amount. It's very difficult to accumulate some money and buy your own house. So everyone will want to protect its house from all the sorts of perils. So that is why they take home insurance. Our health, our health is exposed to a lot of diseases. In this Corona times, let's let's take the example of the Corona period that is going on. What happened? The insurance company uh, has paid huge claim amounts because the deaths were comparatively more than the normal period. So do you think the insurance company has made losses? The answer is no, because due to the risk of Corona, there are crores of people, those who have taken insurance policies during this last two years, even I have taken two insurance policies, two term insurance policies in this last two years due to the death risk. Okay. So the death risk is one thing that tickles uh, the mind of a person and then they buy the insurance policy. So the insurance company has paid huge claims that is agreeable, but the insurance company also has uh, like uh, sold a lot of new insurance policies. Okay. And the insurance companies are booming in this Corona period. Okay. Now, for example, you need to uh, uh, take a loan of, let's say, suppose one crore rupees. Okay. Now let's take the example of Shark Tank. Now there are lots of new startups that are coming to the show and they are like pitching and uh, the sharks are investing the money, right? So is it like this? I am requesting, for example, one crore rupees for a 5% stake and the shark is ready with a check and it will give, and he will give it to me. The answer is no. The shark will check my business model, my growth, my revenue. So all these things need to be checked. For example, you're applying for a loan of five crore rupees to a bank. Will the bank sign a check right away? The answer is no. The bank will check whether you're worthy enough for the loan or not. There is a score known as Sybil score. What does that Sybil score do? What is the use of that Sybil score? For example, in the past, you have taken credit and you have duly repaid the loan. For example, you, you are a person, those who you are a person who uses credit credit card very frequently that builds your civil score because you are taking credit and you're repaying it back on time. I purchased my own center in this, uh, in, in, in the, in the last year. Now the problem which I faced was because I have never taken a loan.
okay and the bank officials were saying sir your sibil score is very low because you have never taken a loan okay so this is the credit rating department of a bank or our financial institution like you cannot give the loan right away right because there are lots of financial frauds happening the nirav modi the the vijay malya there are two persons in this world mukesh ambani and anil ambani and if i ask you to whom will you give the loan the answer will be straight away mukesh ambani because anil ambani is not repaying its debts there are lots of companies those who are unable to repay the debts okay so the credit rating is very important what happened in the us crisis of 2006 7 what happened because the loans were given to subprime persons the loans were given to subprime persons now what is a subprime person the person who is unable to pay the emi was provided with a loan and the bank managers were making huge commissions the bank managers were making huge commissions by just passing on loans to subprime lenders next okay next example let us as you can see in this picture there is a bridge uh, falling down sir what do we do like we are actual professionals why why have you shown the picture of a bridge falling down we are not concerned uh, the bridge is falling down or something like that we are just concerned what is the financial loss if a bridge falls down if there is a terrorist attack if there is a earthquake if there is a tsunami if 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 the rainfall doesn't occur according to what was to happen okay nowadays the farmers are facing a lot of problem when there is rain there is lot of rain when there is no rain there is no rain so the crops are not getting the proper uh, water facility but nowadays we are very advanced in the agricultural field that is something different but all these kinds of financial loss can be predicted can be uh, predicted by persons like us it is known as catastrophe modeling nowadays these things are happen now for example the glaciers are melting there was a like taliban takeover in afghanistan okay tsunamis are common in japan okay bridges falling down is very common in kolkata okay so what is the financial loss basically uh, we can we can just uh, predict what 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 kind of financial loss we and there is protection for these as well okay there are agencies or there are large institutions those who are selling protection for these because they know there are for example lakhs of bridges in a country not all will fall down at the same time okay and they are charging very little premium like for example if a bridge falls down then i am going to pay the repair cost okay and they are collecting premiums from lots of bridges and if two three fall down so they will be making the profits and if there are more bridges falling down than expected then they are going to make a loss so this is the insurance business the banking business that happens now think about the insurance company so what happens is when will i die this date is known or unknown it is unknown okay so how many premiums will a insurance company collect it is unknown right and when will i die this is also unknown till the time i die i am going to pay premiums and when i die the insurance company needs to pay me a claim amount so think about a company whose inflows is also not certain and whose outflows is also not certain is making huge profits by estimating the probabilities of survival and death okay now what what happens is the insurance company starts by collecting lots of data and by collecting the mortality experience of people in india okay the mortality character now whenever you take a insurance policy they, there are lots of risk factors that you need to take do you smoke do you drink do you take hookah uh, if you if you are young you you are 24 25 years old or you are 20 uh, what is the age group i guess 19 to 22 right so if you are 20 years old do you do you do you own a bike or uh, what is the average speed in which you drive your bikes things like that do you have any uh, past illness where you admitted to hospital okay so there is a huge collection of data and then only they provide the insurance okay things like that now let's take the next set of examples stock markets like uh, we can, we can predict how a stock will perform by analyzing the uh, past of the the past history of the stock by analyzing the fundamentals for example a company uh, whose uh management is a very renowned person for example mukesh ambani takes over a company or ratan tata ji takes over a company now we all have that confidence that yes the tatas have acquired it now this company is going to do really well 
okay by analyzing the kmps of a organization how is the fundamental uh of a company what 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 is the debt equity ratio of a company what is the ebitda what is the ebit by analyzing these fundamentals of a company we can predict how a stock will perform okay now the stock market is not that risky that uh, like if you ask your parents like papa where is the money that uh, where, where is the uh, investments what, what kind of investments are we making now if your uh, parents answer like this it's all in fd then they are very risk averse if your parents answer like we are investing in mutual funds then the risk increases little bit and if they are uh, saying you like this for example they are they are directly picking up stocks and they are investing then they are uh, like taking on some good risk because uh, they want some good returns from their investments okay so by by analyzing the past uh, of a stock in which sector now for example in this corona period the fmcg sector has done really well okay and uh, for example the sector which was uh, uh, very hardly hit was the movie industry uh, for example uh, stocks like uh, pvr is there inox is there for example for the last two years they are not able to uh, get some regular revenue okay uh, the the sector which has done really well uh, is the it sector all the it stocks have almost doubled okay so so uh, all the it stocks are uh, like uh, the medical sector has done really well okay so these sectors have done really well so so uh, what what industry are you in okay what what kind of industry are you in what is the market share okay all these things are the fundamentals of a company now let me take a very small example i will not take much time so let's say suppose there is a fire in the factory of a very large organization i'm just giving you some uh, like day to day examples like real life examples now there is a fire in the factory of a very large organization and for that the pl is affected badly because there was huge loss due to that fire okay now the now this fire is being reflected in the share price and the share price goes really down it is obvious if there is a loss in the share price will go down and there are some good investors those who are buying the stock why because the fire will not happen regularly it is a one time event okay so you need to identify the irregularities in the market and then you like uh, bet on stocks now the banking sector for example whatever kind of products uh, that a bank floats for example you go to a bank and there is a term structure of interest rate that is given for example if you are investing your money for 6 months then the rate is different if you are investing your money for 1 year the rate is different if you are investing the money for 5 years the rate is different because the bank is like giving you some sort of uh, greed that you you lock your money with the bank for a larger period of time if for example what is the use of a term deposit what is the difference between a term deposit and a savings uh, and a normal uh, balance in savings account because in savings account the balance you can demand from the bank any point of time but if your money is locked for example for one year for two years in the bank knows when the bank needs to repay the money okay and accordingly the bank is providing loans whatever uh, financial products that a bank float the, the all the mathematics is captured in this course okay you need to be really good with the uh, financial maths part if you if you if you want to build a very successful career in the banking uh, industry okay the credit risk department like the loans nowadays it's not that easy to take a loan from a bank because the, the because the risk officers are sitting at the top of a bank and they're checking each and every loans that are being passed by a bank so it's not that easy to fool the bank right now they will be asking for your last 3 to 4 years pl and balance sheet data what is your earnings how will you be able to pay the emi for what purpose you are taking the loan show me your past records okay it's not that easy now 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 there was ipo season that was uh, there in the last one year now lots of companies are uh, like uh, getting listed in the stock markets now for example when you read the prospectus of a company who is going to get listed all the details are mentioned you cannot fool the public nowadays you need to have all the details mentioned okay next example is netflix for example all these now let's take the example of shark tank okay now it's now it's a very buzzing a uh, show like it's on sony live now what do you think uh, came to the mind so shark tank indian version was created because people from india are watching the shark tank that was based on uh, other countries okay but that was based on other places and they used to watch that shows a lot so now the indian version of shark tank is created 
now what does these uh, online platforms do for example they create amazing shows like the sacred games was there and money heist is there okay so basically it is based on people searches only now netflix collects tons and tons of data based on people searches what kind of shows uh, uh, do they need do they do they like to watch and uh, stuff like that okay and then these shows are created so that the people are uh, liking the shows okay so data analytics is one of the fields where you can work because nowadays every company has tons and tons of data let's take the example of walmart now what item should be placed in which rack of walmart is also done through data and business analytics what rack should contain what item so that the sales is maximized the profit is maximized what item should we keep okay let's take the example of a very a uh, superb chain that is there in mumbai the, the name is dmart okay now there are some new products for example i am launching my new bujia product okay and i want it to get marketed in uh, the whole of mumbai okay so i will meet uh, the owner of dmart and i will say please advertise for my product and whenever you enter dmart my product will be showcased in the first rack and the dmart charges for these kinds of things and that is how they reduce their cost for example if dmart charges 1 lakh rupees from me they are they are going to pass it on to their consumers for other reputed products they are going to give you maggi at 9 rupees instead of 10 rupees they are going to give you cold drink at uh, for example they are going to give you a pepsi bottle at 38 rupees instead of 40 rupees and that is how the company is getting huge economies of scale and huge profits okay they 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 they, they, they basically reinvest the money pensions now for example uh, the average is when a when a student uh, like uh, uh, starts uh, working is 20 to 23 and the normal retirement age is 60 let's say suppose 60 so you work for approximately 35 uh, to 40 years and throughout your employment what happens is you contribute let's say suppose a certain percentage of your salary you contribute 5% of your salary and the employer also contributes oh, is it fine yeah okay so you contribute 5% of your salary and in return the employer also contributes 5% of your salary only now for example your salary is 50000 5% of your salary is 2500 which will be deducted from your salary and it will be deposited in a separate fund so that when you retire you don't need to ask for money from others okay so that is why the pension valuations is a very huge field there where people work okay so 2500 is something which you will be contributing and 2500 your employer will also contribute so that 5000 rupees every month is uh, deposited in a separate fund and whenever you retire you get that money okay so all these things are there uh, all these fields are there where you can work what what kind of i'll not go into that uh, like Like, uh, like written what what's written there. I'll just explain it to you in simple language. Like what things you study in this course is you study about mathematics, you study statistics, you study finance, banking, insurance, risk management is there. Okay, you you uh, you study about computers, you study uh, how to build models. Okay, you study about communications, and the best thing about this course is you can specialize in your domain. Uh, that I will explain a bit later. Okay. you you are someone who is very good at estimating the probabilities because let's take the example of uh, a bank okay who is who is uh, thinking whether to pass a loan or not now the bank will definitely calculate what is the probability that this person is going to repay me all the installments on time okay and that is how the risk of a person is calculated so so things like that okay and it's not that you uh, you you will be given some integration sums to solve some differentiation sum some trigonometry some coordinate geometry it's not like that it's all real life related now the question starts like this a person invest something in a bank for this this period okay and uh, they will just give you some stories in that some real life stories okay now what amount is required when a person retires or something like that okay so it's all real life related like for example uh you need to compare the average iq of delhi and kolkata so what will happen is uh you will select some sample okay you will select a sample based on different diversities like the age group 
like the gender okay occupation so you will select some samples and then you will be able to predict now for example if for delhi it is 125 for kolkata it will be 115 or something like that okay just joking so uh, so it's like that so uh, so all these things like based on sample how you predict things for population okay so all these real life scenarios will be uh, given to you and the best thing about this course is you don't need to mug up anything i'll not say you don't need to mug up anything very less now for example in my ca finals what used to happen is there was a law book there, there was a uh, there was a book on law okay uh, it was around 1200 to 1300 pages and if there is a person who can just fully mug up that book he will get 100 on 100 in law okay so things like that but here you have the formula and the table book which you can carry with yourself in the exam okay and uh, you have the question you just need to apply those formulas okay most of the formulas are given in that uh, actual table book yeah so these i have already explained like what premium should a company charge what financial risks how much um, how much money should a company hold okay so all these things uh, are there now what ever it takes like for example what skills do you need to have in order to complete the course in a very nice manner now you should basically have a good understanding of mathematics being very honest if you are someone uh, who doesn't like to do maths or uh, you for example if there is a very complex problem okay and uh, you are a person who who is of the mentality that this thing will not come in the exam then you should not do this course why am i not able to solve this problem because whenever not not just talking about passing the exams whenever you are working there will be some models that you need to work on and you need to apply your brain whole day okay it's not that easy like uh, like you need to apply your brain it's not something a data entry sort of a job that you the 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 the, the role which you get is analyst you you get the tag of actual analyst so you need to analyze a lot of things and then you will get the desired results you need to have good time management skills because if you start the course now like on a average you it will take you around 5.5 to 6 years of time to complete the course in full okay and till that time you don't complete the course you need to study regularly for 3 to 4 hours it is very 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 important okay you need to have a good understanding of conceptual skills like you are someone who doesn't like to mug up things okay so i i i used to have a lot of problem when when i used to study law audit and uh, like it subjects in ca so so the problem was uh, you just need to mug up things and you just need to uh, like straight forward put it in the exam and uh, there are 13 exams in total which you need to appear so you need to be patient now there will be time periods when you will not be able to clear examination and this phase happens in almost all the students uh, uh, like uh, phase of giving the exams so you need to be patient it is very important things will go like this you are not able to clear an exam in one attempt or maybe two attempts okay so you need to be patient and you need to go on with the course okay you can try with a different paper the next attempt if you are not able to clear any paper for example for two consecutive attempts it 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 happens it 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 really happens it's not that uh, thing you will you will clear all the papers in one attempt i have seen students like that also they have cleared all the papers in one attempt but it's very difficult okay now if you apply a probability game like for example uh, something is the probability of clearing the paper in one attempt now there are 13 papers and you need all ticks so it's very difficult there will be time when when there when you will have some personal problem or you you uh, the college will be demanding more time or your job will be demanding more time okay so you need to be patient in this course now in ca what happens is there are three sets of examinations one is the foundation the other is the inter and uh, the other is final in cfa there are three levels in fnm there are two levels in mba you just need to appear for cat examinations like you need to study in mba college also but the main thing is cat okay so in this is in this course what happens is the course is divided into 13 small steps okay uh, for example uh, in cfa level 1 if you see there are 10 subjects which you need to study in this you are studying one subject only at a time okay we are studying one subject only at a time so that is why the course looks long there are 13 examinations okay but you need to study regularly for 3 to 4 hours 
Now, if you are studying, for example, CA inter examinations, then you need to study 12 to 13 hours every day for nine months. Okay, it's not like that. And there is no group system in this. Uh, for example, if you don't clear CM2 in first attempt, then you need to reappear for CM1, things like that. Or you need to appear for CS1, CS2 together. It's not like that. There are 13 individual examinations which you need to appear and you need to clear uh, all of them. Okay. Yeah. So there are two institutes from where you can pursue the course. Uh, like there are every country is having their own institutes, but in India, uh, like IFO and II have some good existence. Okay. So IFOA is the UK board, like Institute and Faculty of Actuaries, and IA is the Indian Institute of Actuaries. Now, in order to appear for any paper, the IFOA doesn't have any entrance examination. Okay. IFOA is not having any entrance examination, but IA is having any, uh, IA is having the ACET examination, which is the actuarial common entrance test. Okay. You need to clear ACET in order to get the membership of the Indian Institute of Actuaries. And previously there was some criteria for getting the IFOA membership, but nowadays they have removed all sorts of criteria. You can directly apply for membership of IFOA. Okay. Now if a student wants to start the best paper to start with is CM1 or CS1. You can either appear for CM1 or you can appear for CS1 as your first examination from IFOA as a non-member. Okay. Now. IFOA considers that you can consider CM1 or CS1 only as your entrance test. Okay. Now as a non-member, when you don't take any membership, you can appear for CM1 or CS1. Okay. You clear that paper. That is the time when generally students apply for membership, but it's not that you cannot apply for membership, uh, before appearing for these papers. Okay. You can first apply for membership, then go for papers. It is completely fine. But generally what happens is membership is a bit expensive. It roughly takes 20,000 from IFOA to get the membership. So that is why we don't, con uh, we don't recommend this to take the membership first and then appear for papers first appear for a paper, see how the things work. It might happen that you don't like the course. You don't like the content. So you will have a backout option. Okay. So that is why take membership after giving one paper. And it is an or, for example, you cannot appear CM1 and CS1 and then take the membership. No, you can either appear for CS1 or CM1 and then membership is mandatory. Okay. Now the membership cost is 4,000 in IEA. It is 20,000 in IFOA. Okay. ACID charges are roughly 4,000. So in Indian Institute of Actuaries, you first need to clear the actuarial common entrance test. And the syllabus is roughly, uh, some mathematics, statistics, logical reasoning, data interpretation, and verbal ability. It's basically some cat type of syllabus, mini version of cat examinations. Uh, what I would like to say is okay. And you clear a set examination, and then you can appear for papers from the Indian Institute. Now, previously there was huge, a uh, cost difference between IFO and IA, but nowadays it's not that. For the standard papers like CM1, CM2, CS1, CS2, uh, the examination cost is roughly uh, 18 to 20,000 in IFOA and it is 14 to 15,000 in IEI. Okay. And for smaller papers like the CB series papers, I will talk about the papers after, after this slide. And for the smaller papers in IFOA, the cost is roughly 13,000 and in IEI, it is roughly 10,000. Okay. Now there is an annual business, like I'm an annual member of IFOA, IAI, CA body. Okay. So I need to pay some annual membership fees. Okay. In IFOA, it is 7,000 and in IAI, it is 2,500 roughly. Now let's talk about the pass rate. In IFOA, the passing rates are very consistent. It's not that they are fluctuating in the passing rates. Now they are consistent between 30,000. I mean, sorry, they, they, they're consistent within 30% and 50%. Now what happens is, for example, uh, if the IFOA wants to regulate the results and they, they, they are planning to, uh, like, uh, maybe, uh, show some low passing rates, then they will not go below 30%. It is what we have seen over past experience over, over the, uh, over the past few years. And in IEI. The results are very fluctuating. 
now they can go as high as 50% and as low as 3 to 4%. So that is why we don't generally comment on the passing rates of IEI. The last few attempts have been good from IEI. Now they are not uh, uh, basically showing such low rates. Okay, they are, they are, they are consistent uh, in double digits at least. They are, they are consistent 15%, uh, 20% on average. Okay, but in IEI, it is very common that the passing rates can drop to 3 to 4%. Okay, and in IFO, the results are very consistent. It is roughly 30% to 50%. Now, the 30% can go to 27 or maybe 25, but not like 5% or 10% or something like that. We haven't seen uh, in the last uh, six to seven years something like this. Okay, now uh, the exam month. IFOA exams are in April and September and the IEI exams are in March and September. Now let's talk about the 22 attempt. It's uh, totally online. Okay. The paper, I will just talk about the online examinations after the slide. So these are the March, uh, March and September is for IEI and April and September is for IFOA. Previously there was exemption policy till 2021. Both the institutes were giving mutual recognition exemptions. Now, what is an exemption? For example, you have cleared CS1 from IFOA. It was considered a pass from the Indian body as well and vice versa. But nowadays the exemptions have been removed. So if you all are starting, either you need to plan your examinations from IFOA or you need to plan your examinations from IEI. Okay. So this is the thing. Now, the, the, the basic question is, the students ask from which institute we should do. Now, my answer to this is it's totally same. Okay. Both the institutes are totally same in, in terms of getting a job. It's not that the IEI is having low rates. So you will get more value if you go for a job. It's not like that. Both the institutes are basically same from job point of view. The only difference is IEI has low passing rates and IFO has consistent passing rates and IFO is a bit expensive. So in one word, if I am to say is what happens is key in IFO, uh, if you are spending 125 rupees in IEI, you will be spending hundred rupees. Okay. In IEI, if you're spending hundred rupees in IFO, you need to spend 125 rupees. So IFO is on average 25% expensive than IEI. Okay. And I, I have already uh, explained you the entrance part. Now uh, you can go for uh, uh, CM1 or CS1, and then you can take the membership if you want to appear for examinations from IFOA. Okay. Yeah. Now there are 13 papers which are divided into four stages. Now the first stage is the co principal stage. Okay. These are seven compulsory papers. Okay. There is no option in this either or not. You need to like appear for all the examinations. Now CM1 is actual mathematics. It is a paper which is based on banking and insurance. CM2 is a paper which is based on stock markets and wherever you are seeing the M thing. Okay. There are two examinations. Okay. There is paper A, which will be on MS word currently because the examinations are online and there is a paper B like whatever knowledge you have studied in the uh, like, uh, while you're doing the sums, you need to apply it in Excel as well, MS Excel. So there are two examinations, paper A and paper B. Paper A is basically the written examination, which is currently being conducted in word. Okay. And previously it was conducted on, uh, examination centers only. Okay. And, uh, paper B is something which was from first only, uh, online from home. Okay. And wherever you're seeing the S code, like the statistics. There is a paper B, which is known as R programming. Okay. So in paper A, you need to like solve the sums. There is nothing called as theory in this. Don't confuse paper A with theory. It is basically sum solving. For example, you need to calculate some loan, uh, amounts for five years. You can do it on pen and paper, but what if it is for 25 years for 30 years, then you need MS Excel, right? So wherever you're seeing the M code, it is MS Excel in paper B and wherever you're seeing the S code, it is R programming. Okay. So CM1, CM2, CS1, CS2, you need to pass two examinations. Okay. And, uh, the CB series, like, like CS1 is a paper, which is on actuarial statistics. Now this is the paper 
with which most of the students they start okay so the ratio is basically 50 50 now 50% of the students they start with cm1 and 50% of the students they start with cs1 okay now what happens is uh uh once you clear cs1 then you can go for cm1 and vice versa and in cs1 there will be two examinations paper a where you need to solve statistical problems and in paper b you need to implement all those things that you have studied in r programming so whenever you are studying this course of actuarial science you will get to know about two softwares in depth one is the ms excel and the other is r programming okay and no prior knowledge is required like for example you should be a coder or you should know about ms office in full it's nothing like that okay it's nothing like that the cb series papers are little bit easier like it roughly requires 200 hours of study to go for papers like cm1 cm2 cs1 cs2 cs2 is a paper which is based on general insurance and it is the upper version of cs1 in cs2 also there are two examinations paper a which is you need to solve the statistical problems and paper b is r programming cb1 is a paper which is based on accounting finance auditing okay so business finance is the name of the paper cb2 is economics and cb3 is basically simulation game like basically they are going to check whether you are able to develop the business sense or not it 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 it, it hardly takes any effort to uh, clear cb3 now in the first seven papers if you see there are four difficult papers which is cm1 cm2 cs1 cs2 and there are three easy papers now what we recommend is give one uh, tougher paper and one easier paper mixed okay and that depends on person to person based on uh, how the student is performing or, and things like that okay now what is advisable if you are doing this course you should clear this first seven papers before you graduate this is something which is advisable and not mandatory when i say advisable students consider it to be uh, sir ne bola tha no it's not like that so it is advisable that you clear these seven papers okay but it's not mandatory what if you clear five papers then also it's good you are eligible for a job even if you clear three papers you are eligible for a job it's not like that that you need to clear seven papers and then only you will get a job but yes if you are having these seven papers in your hand and you are having good uh, communication skills good soft skills then what happens is you get a job very easily you don't need to uh, like uh, you need you don't need to do very hard work for getting that job okay because you have a very strong profile like you all are students of a very reputed college so you don't need to uh, think about your college credential right because if if some if some interviewer is seeing is the candidate is from lsr then they don't uh, think anything else okay so you definitely have some uh, upper end edge uh, when compared to others okay now the next stage is the co practices again these three papers are compulsory papers okay actuarial practice you need to appear for two examinations okay modeling practice it is a paper which is based on ms excel okay you need to build models in this paper communications practice basically they are going to check whether you are able to communicate to your company stakeholders your company uh, peers your policy holders okay to different teams in a company so communications practice and modeling practice again are easier papers when compared to cp1 now what is actuarial practice it is the 200 mark examination and the and the most difficult examination in this whole series now what happens in this paper is you need to apply all the knowledge that you have studied in the first stage basically it is the application of all the knowledge that you have studied in the first seven papers okay so this is actuarial practice now once you complete the first 10 papers there is no either or in the first 10 papers it is compulsory okay after that you need to give any two papers which is the specialist principal stage among these papers listed now for example i am working in finance company then i am going to give the paper of sp5 and sp6 if i am working in let's say suppose life insurance then i am going to give the paper of let's say suppose sp1 and sp2 then i don't need to think about all the other examinations okay so 7 plus 3 plus 2 in total there are 12 and the last one is specialist advanced so if i am working in investment and finance then which all papers i am going to give is sp5 sp6 from specialist principal stage 
and SA7 from the specialist advanced stage. So in total, there are 13 examinations, 7 plus 3 plus NA2 plus NE1. Okay. So this course allows you to specialize in the field in which you're working. Okay. You don't need to think about all the other fields. So it is a plus point of this course. Okay. Now, how can you achieve the fellowship? Now, 10 papers with one year's of work experience will lead you to associateship. You will be called an associate actuary. Now, 13 papers with three years of work experience will lead you to fellowship. You will, call the, you will be called a fellow actuary. Again, I repeat, 10 papers, the first 10 examinations, not any 10. It's not any 10. The first 10 papers with one year of work experience, it will be called an associate actuary. And all the 13 examinations with three years of work experience, you will be called a fellow actuary. Okay. Yeah. So these are the employers, those who employers. So all the insurance companies. Okay. There are some pension valuations, companies, trading companies, hedge fund companies, finance companies, all the big fours, PwC, EY, KPMG, Deloitte. Okay. Banks, Goldman, uh, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, data analyst firms, reinsurance companies. Now you don't generally see uh, Swiss re or Munich re advertising, right? So basically when the insurance company has taken a lot of risk and the insurance company wants to share some risk with someone in return for paying a premium, then they go for reinsurance companies. Okay. Now, for example, the risk appetite of an insurance company is hundred crores, but they have taken on policies worth 150 crores. Then they're going to pass on the risk to reinsurance companies and they're going to pay the portion of the premium to the reinsurance companies. So whenever the claim happens, the extra 50 crores is going to be paid by reinsurance companies. Okay. Yeah. So again, now let's talk about the salary. It's very important. Now, whenever you're fresher, what happens is there are two ways in which you can get a job. Okay. One is your, uh, on campus and the other is your off campus. If you're getting an on-campus placement, then, uh, if you're having around four to five papers and you're having some good soft skills by soft skills, I mean, you should have some good participation in the college activities. Uh, you should have uh, knowledge of softwares like uh, SQL, power BI, Python, R and Excel. You're already doing VBA is a good plus. Okay. Learn three to four softwares so that your CV looks upgraded. Okay. And, uh, if you're having around four to six papers and as a fresher, you can expect on campus roughly around seven to eight lakhs. But if you're applying off campus, the salary level for a job will be same, but some of them, they ask for an internship first. So in the internship, the salary will be a little bit low. It can be around uh, 25 to 30,000 because they are, they are going to check you like basically the probation period. So it, the internship period can range from three to six months. And then you will get a salary of around seven to eight lakhs. It is the starter. Okay. Now this course has the benefit of uh, dual salary benefits. One is the normal annual increment, which you get. And the other is uh, whenever you're clearing papers, you're getting an increment. Okay. Now, for example, there is a, uh, like, like it, it is basically fixed paper wise, and it is based on the difficulty of the paper. Now you go to a job with six papers at a salary of, let's say, suppose seven lakhs and you clear four more papers. Okay. In the next two years. So if you're having an experience of approximately two years and you're having 10 papers, then your salary will be roughly 12 to 15 lakhs. It is average. Okay. Now you get paper wise increment. Now, for example, you clear CM2 after going to a job then your per annum salary will get hiked by roughly 70 to 80,000. Okay. You're getting the annual increment that is, that is completely different, but you also get paper wise increment. So you generally double or triple your salary by the time you become a fellow. So one is the hike in salary due to experience and the other is due to papers, because when you go to a job, you're not a qualified actually. You're just a fresher with around four to five papers who wants to complete the course. So by the time you are having around four years of experience, three to four years of experience and you have, and you are, and you have got all the papers in your hand, your salary will be roughly 25 to 30 lakh rupees. Okay. 
so if you ask me some kind of minimum so by the time you are a fellow you can minimum expect a salary of roughly 22 to 23 lakh rupees and by the time you are an associate the first 10 examinations you can expect a salary of around 13 to 14 lakh rupees so these are the industry standards that i have told you little bit less and little bit more will definitely be there based on your performance uh, your negotiation skills with the company how you have changed the company and etc etc okay so by the time you are a fellow and you are having around 3 to 4 years of experience definitely you will be sitting on a salary scale of roughly uh, 22 25 30 lakh rupees so basically this is the indian uh, salary range that i have talked about okay <clears throat> now there are some faqs like uh, which i would like to discuss and then we will be uh, taking the queries so how to get your first actual job first thing is you should clear around as i have mentioned the first 6 to 7 papers little bit less will work but you need to have some soft skills in your hand like r excel vba python these all are additions okay and if you're participating regularly in your college activities or you are the member of some committee it's really good now how to balance work and studies together like once you start working what happens is your paper clearance rate gets low because you're working for around 12 hours 10 hours every day so what happens is you need to have that time for example if your office starts at 10 then you need to have that yes i need to study in the morning 6 to 8 it's not that you need to study all day it's not it's not like that you need to have that regular study habit it's not history it's not geography that you need to mug up one month before the exam it's basically maths which you used to do in your 11 and 12 maths is something which we used to practice every day for one 1.5 years okay you can utilize the weekends well if you are having some off you can take it before the examinations okay now, which institute is better as I've already mentioned. Now, uh, if you want to do it from IEI, it's equally good. Okay. And there is no as such a recognition difference between the two. It's nothing like that. Okay. Both the institutes are same, but yes, there are 13 examinations and seeing the passing rate of IFO, we generally recommend IFO Institute. What uh, the, the main reason for recommending IFO is there are 13 examinations, right? So. Uh, why take on the extra burden so this is the thing so if finance is not a problem then definitely a student should go for ifoa okay the, the, it is basically a smooth journey with ifoa that is that is what we see can a commerce student pursue actual science i am from commerce shivangi ma'am is also from commerce and my first fellow uh my first uh, student who is she's a fellow right now she's also from commerce background so it's nothing like that generally what is recommended is eco math stat but definitely ba i mean sorry uh bba bcom like the majority is from bba and bcom okay it's not like that commerce student cannot pursue actual science you just need to have that mathematical skills as i have talked about like in 11 like in 11 and 12 you must have pure maths okay so definitely like generally what happens is eco math stat these uh constitute roughly 40 to 50 percent and uh, your bba and bcom students they constitute roughly uh, 50 to 60 percent okay this is basically the uh, student ratio how many years does it take to complete the course if you're very much consistent roughly it will take you 5.5 to 6 years of time to complete the course like three years of your graduation and three years uh, uh, after that now generally what happens is yeah sure i will repeat it now uh, if you see generally economics honors maths honors stats honors roughly 40 percent uh, is uh, constituted by these persons and bba bcom because we generally see that bba and bcom students are more in numbers okay so generally what happens is 50 to 60 percent is your uh, commerce student like undergraduation commerce <laughs> Now, if you are very much consistent with the papers, now one more skill that you should add is you should keep giving papers in this course. Like you should be very much consistent uh, uh, with the papers. Like it's not that you have cleared two papers in one attempt and then you have a gap of one year and then you're giving papers. It's not like that. Like you should be consistent with the uh, papers which you're giving. Okay. Every term you should appear for paper. So if you go in that manner, roughly it will take you six years of time to complete the course. And soft skills, as I've already mentioned, you should participate in your college activities, uh, softwares, as I've already mentioned, 
Power BI is there, Tableau is there, VBA, SQL, Python. Okay, R and Excel, you're already learning in this course. What professional courses we can pursue? Being very honest, nowadays, Actuarial Science is self-sufficient. You don't need any other course. But yes, this is something which goes with uh, CFA if you want to build a uh, uh, more and more career in finance. It goes with FRM. If you want to build a good career in the banking sector, it goes with MBA. If, if you like, for example, you're an associate and you're having around 1.5 years of experience. And that is the point of time that you uh, start preparing for your CAT. And uh, by the time you go for an MBA college, you should have two years of experience. So it will be counted as a plus while you're giving your uh, MBA interviews and stuff. So like if you want to do a master's or an MBA after that, it's also very good. So how to prepare for actual interviews uh, if, if, if there is any student who is uh, preparing. So uh, the best thing is you should study your notes, which you have prepared while studying for papers, because in the technical interview, they're going to grill you uh, with all sorts of questions. For example, there, uh, a subject which you have studied two years ago. Okay. You, you, if you're sitting for an interview, you should be having good knowledge of that uh, paper. If you have cleared that. Okay. So it's not that uh, they are going to only ask you questions from your recent paper. You should have very good technical knowledge. You should revise the content properly. And uh, like uh, your communication is very important. Like the way which you communicate and uh, like you, you, if you, if, if in your CV, you're having uh, some extracurricular activities that you can talk about that. Okay. So yes, but definitely uh, like you should start preparing minimum uh, 10 days ago, like minimum 10 days before you should start preparing because there is lots of content uh, in the papers that you have cleared. So having good knowledge is very important. Okay. So all these are common FAQs that we get. Okay. So yes, if you, if you want uh, to get placed in good companies, have some good interaction with your immediate seniors because they are the ones they can help you for getting a good, uh, uh, placement. Okay. So yes, it, it is also one of the good, uh, things which you can do have a professional LinkedIn profile. Okay. It, 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 it adds up to your uh, CV. Okay. Yeah. So yes. And now we are open for questions. So you all can raise hands and you can put your questions in the chat box and I'm going to answer it one by one. Yeah. Just give me a moment. I'll just have some water. Yeah, there is a question education eligibility criteria. There is no eligibility criteria as such, but you can check yourself. Okay. You can check yourself that whether you are, uh, like, uh, suitable for the course or not by giving a paper as a non member from IFOA, you can appear for now. See the April attempt is gone. Okay. Though the registrations haven't started, but I will not recommend anyone to start now and give any paper in April attempt. Like CM1 or CS1 will not be possible being very honest. So the attempt which you can plan your paper is the September attempt. Okay. So in September, what you can do is you can plan either CM1 or CS1. So there is no eligibility criteria to give this paper as a non-member. You can simply register for the exam in the month of uh, August and you can appear for the examination. If you have uh, started preparing for it from now. Okay. And uh, once you clear this examination, you're, you're comfortable with the course and then you go and take on the membership. There is no, uh, as such criteria that you need 85 plus in maths, or you should be from this college, or you should be studying this as such, there is no criteria to take the membership of IFOA, but in IEA, definitely. Yes. You need to clear ACT examination. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what will be the salary if you are already a CFA all levels pass C. The unitary method doesn't work. For example, I am a CA and I have cleared 12 ex actual examinations. Today, if I go for a job, I need to start with that 10 to 12 lakh package only. Though I am a CA, I will get a little bit extra uh, salary maybe, but it doesn't work. Key, uh, uh, for CA, it is 10 lakhs and for actuaries, it is 8 lakhs. So I'm going to get the salary of 18 lakhs. It's nothing like that. If you are studying good courses in addition to actuaries, you are more probable to get a good job. And little bit salary hike is expected. Okay. So apart from that, I don't think that the unitary method works. Uh, for example, if you're an actuary, a CFA and an FRM, so 10, 10, 10, 30 lakhs is something which you will be starting. The answer is no. Once you get the job, you are on the same platform with everyone who is working. Okay. And now with your, uh, good working skills, you need to get the hike. 
I request to please uh, switch off the mic, please. Wh whoever is switching on the mic. Yeah. Sir, can you please explain the membership part once again? Yes, definitely. Sure. Uh, see, there is no criteria to take the membership from IFOA, but in Indian Institute, you need to clear the entrance examination, which is the actual common entrance test. And then only like you will be able to take the membership. Okay. But in IFOA, there is no assess criteria to take the membership. You can, you can take the membership, then appear for papers, or you can give either CM1 or CM1, uh, CM1 or CS1. You're once you're comfortable and then also you can take the membership. IFOA membership is open all the year. There is no as such deadlines also that you need to uh, uh, take the membership between one month only something like that. No. Please repeat student ratio. That is what I have done. Okay. Is there any minimum time period between two papers which needs to be followed like in see the No. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what happens is see. Uh, generally what happens is as I have uh, some good connections. So while talking to them, uh, over, over, over time, I've realized that you should not have a gap between papers. Okay. Now, if you're having a gap between papers, for example, you have cleared CM one in April, 2020, and then you're taking a break of 1.5 years and then you're starting. So if there is some personal issue, you need to explain it to them that this was my personal issue. And that is why I was not able to give the papers. But if you're not able to satisfy them, then uh, it is something considered as a negative point. It means that you're not able to handle the pressure of the papers. Okay. So this will reflect in your working habit also. So there should not be any gap between the examinations. You need to be very consistent because you are one of the greatest asset of the company. So the company also wants you to qualify as soon as possible. Okay. Shall we take up this course along as the corners itself is a time. See, uh, Anshika, what happens is, uh, generally what happens is, uh, BCom and BBA, uh, require less amount of time when compared to eco math and stat. But what happens is eco math and stat students, they already have the base very strong. So for example, if, uh, I'm not generalizing or not pointing out to any particular undergraduate, uh, community. Okay. It, it is something which we see. And I'm also from BCom honors. Let's, let's compare me and an eco honor student. Now, if I take roughly 200 hours to study the curriculum, what we generally see is eco honor students. They take roughly 175 hours or maybe 150 hours. Like, because they know the back process as well, because, uh, uh, it's, it's in quite synergy, the stats honors, the maths honors, because you're doing so much of math stats and then you're applying it in this course. Okay. So generally, uh, eco honors and maths honors and stats honors, the, the students, they do really well in this course. Okay. So this is something which we have observed over time. Like our top scorers, generally what happens is the list, uh, Though eco math and stats students are less in numbers, but they make up to the list. Okay. So yes. So, so this is something which we have seen. Okay. And, uh, in eco math and stat, what happens is generally you study the back process. Like for example, if there is a formula X follows binomial N comma P in these courses, what you study is from where did this formula come? And in actual science, we studies, once this formula has arrived, we, where do we need to apply this binomial distribution formula? So it is considered that, you know, the back process and the front application process as well. Okay. So uh, it's not like that. If you are from eco honors, it is always, always recommended because the most synergy that you will get from, uh, this course is, uh, if you're doing eco math and stat. Okay. What urge uh, you to take actual science as a career? And I am not a CFA first of all, and uh, FR I'm not very sure uh, if, if will I, I will be able to complete or not. And yes, uh, see what happens is uh, nowadays you are having such sessions. I am very glad, and it I'm I'm feeling so happy that I'm able to at least give you all the right guidance about this course, the little bit, whichever I, whatever I know, but think around seven or eight years ago, I, I started my first year of college in 2014. So it is roughly seven years ago. Okay. At that point of time, uh, people used to choose courses based on, uh, what, uh, their big brothers have done or the seniors have done. Okay. So 
actual science at that point of time was not uh, uh, that famous. Okay, so uh, after clearing two levels of CA, when there is a three years of gap, you don't have anything apart from article ship. So at that point of time, like uh, I uh, searched about this course and I like and maths and stats was something which I used to like and uh, the content of the course was really good. So that is why I, I, I plan to go for this course. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and the most honest answer for this is Archita uh, being from a very middle class family. Uh, what what urged me was uh, what I thought at that point of time is uh, which is very wrong. I I just uh, told about the unitary method. What I thought was if I do CA, I will get a salary of fifteen lakhs, and if I do actuaries, I will get roughly fifteen to twenty lakhs. So if I do both, then I will get a salary of thirty five to forty lakhs. So this was one of the biggest reason for choosing boom the two difficult courses. Okay, yeah. What are the future prospects of actual science in India and abroad? Yes, this is a good question. So let's talk about the prospects of actual science. Now, previously, what used to happen is only insurance companies, pension valuations companies, they used to hire actual science professionals. Nowadays, you see there are there is lots and lots of non-traditional roles that is coming up. Okay, the trading firms, the banking firms, uh, for example, uh, the data analyst firms, they are, they are like basically realizing the true potential, what an actual uh, student can do. And that is why they have started hiring in, in, in our St. Xavier's college. What happens is there is a company named as futures first, they come for placement and they hire roughly 10 persons in those 10 persons, uh, they select for trading, uh, roughly five to six are from actual science. Okay. So they basically see some good numerical uh, ability in them. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> there is a lot of outsourcing work, which is going on in India. And if you're joining a good MNC, uh, and if you're working really well, you might be sent by the company abroad also. Like there are a few examples. One of my friend is there. Few of my students are there. Okay. So, uh, they are also, uh, working in a working abroad. So in abroad, there is a very huge market. Now, for example, in India, you don't generally see insurance for your tooth. Right. There is no as such insurance for your uh, like dental insurance is is, is uh, not there in India, but in abroad, there is a huge market. There is insurance for even the smallest of thing. Okay. So basically the penetration of insurance in India is very low. And uh, as you see a very small portion of the persons they're investing in stock markets. So definitely with the rise in the banking and the nowadays the, the RBI has issued a circular that, uh, um, there, there needs to be chief risk officers. Like who, who will be the person? Those who will be the risk officers. It will be uh, persons like us. Okay. So definitely there are some good prospects and all these companies are hiring extensively because they see India as a place where they can hire person at a good rate. I will not say cheap, but at a good rate. Okay. So definitely like uh, they're hiring Indian professionals for abroad work as well. <clears throat> yeah. Sunny, is there any time limit that I need to follow or I can go on with the uh, questions? Nothing as such. I think we can okay. go on. I'll, I'll just take these questions. It's really good. How does a work day looks like in the life of an actual? See, uh, Krishna, it's nothing like that. Uh, the, like you need to work. Okay. Like 10 to 12 hours of work is there. What sets apart this course is after talking to my friends and my students is you really need to apply your brain. Okay. Because you are there sitting and you need to analyze the mortality characteristics of uh, the population in India. And then you're like setting the premiums, you're setting up reserves. Okay. So basically. Uh, you need to apply your brain all day, all day. And uh, there is some good study support that the company provides. Once you join a good company, all your uh, paper cost is reimbursed by the company. You get study mentor who is there to guide you uh, uh, which paper to appear. And uh, definitely there is some increments which you get uh, in terms of hike in salary. Uh, once you clear some good papers. Okay. So all these things are definitely there. And there is study leave policy as well that just a few days before the exam, based on the paper difficulty, you will be getting leaves. So definitely the work environment is good, but yes, 
uh, I'll not I'll not show the good picture. Always uh, you need to work really hard. Okay, and uh, this is basically the Indian uh, work environment culture. I would like to say that uh, like you you need to have that uh, hard work uh, thing in you. L roughly twelve hours of work, ten hours of work. Based on company to company, it depends. Okay, like there will be time period when the quarter end is there. You need to work till maybe eleven or twelve also. Okay. Which paper can I give other than CM one? Uh, see, these are the papers which uh, uh, we should you 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 should start because don't start with easier papers like CB one, CB two, CB three. Go for if you if you're planning for the September attempt because in April it will not be possible. Go for CM one. You can start preparing for CM one as your first examination for the September attempt. Don't take any membership now. Don't think from which institute you need to do because both the institutes are having the same set of materials. The same preparation is required for both the institutes. Okay, just start preparing for the paper right now. And once you start preparing, like uh, once you once you start preparing after completing the syllabus in the next three to four months, then you decide from which institute you want to appear. Definitely, if you want to appear from the Indian Institute, you need to decide it before the June attempt of ASET. Like, what is the last date of registering for the ASET examination? You need to check because then you need to start preparing for ASET as well. Again, ASET is something which requires roughly one week of time, so it's not that difficult. Okay, so the best paper which you can start with is CM one. Uh, sir, I have already cleared CM one from IFOA. Okay, okay. Then, then the That's next paper is CS one. Sir, I don't think I I will be able to prepare well given that uh, it's already fifteen January. Yeah, that is why I'm telling now. Whatever you need to plan, you need to plan it for the September attempt only. That is what I will recommend because CM one and CS one. See, even if you clear the examination, as I've already mentioned in the last FAQ part, how to prepare for actual interview? What what I talked about is. you need to have thorough understanding and cs1 is something which is applied in cm1 in cs2 in cm2 okay so cs1 needs to be studied with great effort okay so give the exam don't don't rush with the papers okay like after cs1 there will be cs2 after that it will be cm2 so don't rush so that is the thing how oh. so uh, both uh, the both the institutes have the same curriculum as i have talked about rashmi there are 13 examinations in both the institutes okay what is the employment rate of the course see currently if you are a candidate who is uh, from lsr and has cleared around 5 to 6 examinations has some good soft skills then you will not be unplaced okay if what what why 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 this unemployment thing occurs currently in this course is if you have not got the desired number of papers first thing if you are not able to answer properly in the interviews you're getting interview calls but you're not able to convert okay and you're not able to communicate your thoughts well okay you're planning for some other course you're not having the you're not having the soft skills okay so uh, maybe uh, your college grades are not that good okay so these things uh, will uh, definitely not help you with the employment if you are having good technical knowledge you have studied all the papers nicely then i don't think you will be unemployed especially talking about uh, you all so how does the work of an actual analyst differ from financial analyst auditor see uh, basically uh, the financial analyst they work on the financial data if you are an actual analyst definitely you will be working on building models and that differs whether you are in an insurance company or you are in a uh, like you are in the catastrophe modeling now insurance also has two parts it is uh, general insurance it is life insurance again there is health insurance okay so uh, definitely financial what does an a financial analyst do like you will be predicting the outcome of a stock like how will the stock perform year on year basis so you need to build financial models and for that you you will basically uh, try to uh, gather more and more knowledge about the company like you will first try to evaluate the cash flows of the company the increase in percentage profits of the company okay and data analyst is something which analyzes 
data for the benefit of a company. Now, for example, let's talk about Lady Sri Ram College. Now, for example, if there are 1000 seats in Lady Sri Ram College, they take the enrollment of 1100 persons. The main reason for this is they know that at the last moment, there will be a few cancellations. So if you are someone who, who is basically analyzing this data for the benefit of the college, then, then definitely you're a data analyst. And this is something we, 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 we all have lots and lots of data. Okay. And there will be some person who will basically filter it out based on some softwares and provide it to you something in the form of a meaningful information. Like you have the, you have the PL balance sheet of a company, but you need to calculate the ratios because by ratios, you understand the data better. So this is the thing. Uh, so could you please repeat on the kind of software for see CM papers are having uh, Excel based examinations apart from the written examination, CS papers are having R based examinations and CB papers have only one examination in CB. You don't need any software knowledge. How many papers can be given in an attempt? It is advisable. You give one or two papers in an attempt, one difficult and one easy. Uh, definitely you should appear for ACID because I think that ACID is something, uh, which should not be much of a pain. Okay. So you should definitely appear for a set. Is the fees, uh, uh, is the fees different for all? And definitely uh, you can refer to our asset videos. You can type our channel name in YouTube. So you will get all the asset videos there. Okay. So it's not that difficult for asset. Roughly uh, you need around uh, two to three weeks of time to prepare at a maximum. I'm telling you. Is the fees different for all papers or we have to pay once? No, uh, the fee structure is different. The roughly uh, range is uh, 13,500 to 20,000 for IFOA and it is uh, 9,000 to 15,000 for IEI. And once you go to a good company, all the cost is reimbursed by the company only. So you don't need to think about the examination fees uh, after that. Since there is an increase in the number of actuaries, it is said we uh, don't get good job and salary unless we clear a lot of papers or sometimes it's difficult to get a job itself. Uh, see if you like, be, let's take the example of a person who is a good CA or a good CFA or uh, who is a good actuarial analyst in Willis Towers, Watson or Accenture. Take advice from these people. Okay. Instead of the persons, those uh, who are not placed. See, the point is, uh, if you're doing any co professional course, there is no course, which can guarantee you placement. There is no course which can guarantee you placement. Okay. A qualified CA is working at a salary of three lakhs and there are qualified CAs. Those who are working at a fresher salary of 35 lakhs. So why so much gap? It all depends on you. Okay. So the future prospect is for you, not for the course. First thing. And uh, if you have got good increase in the number in actuaries is due to the demand. It is not that increase in the number of CAs or CFAs is due to the demand. It's not that, uh, that if there is an increase in number of actuaries, you will not get job. It's not like that. It's basically the core structure. Like it's the all education system. Like, uh, uh, previously, uh, if you see, uh, in your grand in your grandparents time, uh, if a, if a candidate has studied till class 10, it was considered to be good in your parents time. If, if, if they considered, if, if they have qualified a good graduation, it was considered good. And nowadays, if you don't have any professional qualification, you're considered bad. So basically this is the advancement of education in India over time. So it's nothing like that. If there is an increase in number of actuaries, uh, you will not get job or something like that. You it's totally you who is, uh, going to have the prospect. It's I, I generally feel, uh, it's not the prospect of any course because I have students, those who have got around six to seven papers, but they're not getting placement. It's not that they're not getting interview calls. They are getting interview calls, but they're not able to convert it. Okay. So there are jobs in the market and there you, you should ask your immediate seniors, those who have done actual science and just check what is the difference between a student who is not getting placement and who, and who has got placement. Definitely the someone who has got placement is having something extra. And what is that extra? You only find it out. <clears throat>
can you please brief what prerequisite uh, there is no as such prerequisite uh, you should be good in maths like uh, the 11 and 12 pure maths part uh, you should be good at it then uh, this 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 is this is basically the prerequisite the derivatives part the calculus part trigonometry is not there okay so you should be basically be good with uh, pure maths part uh, do we need coaching i have done all the papers myself okay so <laughs> it's not that you cannot do self study but what is recommended is if you uh, if finance is not a problem then definitely you should take training because uh, it generally builds a good base okay and uh, this is basically a trade off like if you uh, take a training you know very nicely what to study how to study when to study and how much to study so if you are building a good base uh, like definitely it will help you in the other papers as well and it's not that you cannot study self there are lots of groups there are lots of resources available online definitely you can self study it's not that even today even now i will be preparing for the higher papers uh, for self study only but definitely for the basic the first seven papers like the first six papers uh, cm1 cm2 cs1 cs2 cb1 cb2 it is recommended that you take training because it it helps you to give a good base and uh, whichever institute you are going for they will definitely help you with the uh, placement part and uh, uh, they will help you with the interview part so it definitely helps you uh, i'll not recommend because see it's uh, during my college time what happened is uh, there are lots of my friends those who started both the courses and it's really difficult to manage both at the same point of time okay so think about it i you will not be having any social life because roughly every day you need to study sometimes there will be your ca exams and sometimes there will be your actual science exams so you will have zero social life my routine was something like i used to go to college at 6 uh, and i used to take the last two periods off and uh, then i used to teach from 9 to 11 then i had my ca article ship and at the uh, night after having my dinner i used to study so this is basically very difficult to be consistent in this okay but if you do both definitely there is lots of work coming up in the ifrs sector and uh, all the big fours they have started hiring uh, candidates those who are having uh, ca background as well it, it is definitely a very good plus okay uh, can we progress towards finance banking with actual sense if not in short definitely definitely there is lots and lots of uh, new openings in the banking and in the finance sector as well let's say suppose uh, there are some students those who think that i will go in a core job there is nothing as such a core job now if you do ca uh, audit and tax is the core thing but cas are working in business profile as well business analyst profile as well and you if you have cleared the papers and if you have got some good app, uh, if you have got some good opportunity as a business analyst in some of the top companies like mckinsey bain uh, boston and uh, accenture so why not accept that there is nothing as such a core job or a non core job okay so definitely there is lots and lots of uh, job opportunities it's not that you need to work in the insurance domain only it's not like that and and think this and uh, and definitely always uh, like have this in your mind that uh, it's not uh, uh, always something that whatever you study will be applied in your job okay that definitely some part of the knowledge you will you will be able to apply in your job not all the things that you have studied in, will be applied in the job it's not like that the the working field is a lot different than what you study in the books if we do some professional courses like data science and related uh, not required being very honest see uh, i am a person if if the course is not good i will definitely tell it to you that don't do this course it's not it's not having good prospects but nowadays what happens is uh, if you're doing only actual science it's it's enough it's enough you don't need anything else just have some good computer programming skills because you need to work on computers like i ask these students if i say them apply we look up in excel they don't know it so things will not work like that okay they are, they are going to grill you in the interview and then only uh, they are they are, they, are, uh, they are going to take you so it's not required if you are doing any add on first focus on clearing the papers and having a good profile that is sufficient okay 
if you don't get a good job then think about courses like data science or mba or masters or cfa but first see whether you are getting a good job or not if you are satisfied with the job you will invest lakhs of rupees in this data data science courses and uh, cfa or frm what is the need if 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 the company wants that uh, you should do cfa the company will tell you that you do cfa and we are going to reimburse it this is what happens in big companies okay uh uh see uh, as of now first thing that you need to start with is start preparing for the papers and soft skills is something which you can do in your final year not now first focus fully on papers like start preparing for cm1 because now you have a huge uh, time gap uh, of roughly around 8 months so start with uh, cm1 and uh, then slowly and slowly like progress keep clearing the papers and then take on some soft skill courses like python or maybe uh, power bi tableau things like that okay so yes i guess that was it and uh, i hope so all your queries were uh, satisfied yes sir absolutely i think all of the queries in the chat box were uh, absolutely pretty well answered by you and um, i really thank you for having this insightful session uh, the first part of the session the slides and the presentation was absolutely insightful and this add on thing for answering these question answers uh, by extending the uh, session time was also um, really nice of you of giving such time to uh, to our session thank you so much i believe that this would be really helpful for all of our students who have attended more than 100 students attended today and uh, again i would like to thank you for your time okay okay